How's it going folks? I'm Des with Desfit and this is the brand new Garmin Venue 2 GPS Sport Watch, the follow-up to the original Venue that came out quite some time ago and I'll tell you what, Garmin's been busy. The original Venue made kind of a splash because Garmin departed from their transflective displays that they've used for years with an AMOLED display, but AMOLED displays typically use a lot more power, but somehow they were still able to get about 3-5 to five days of battery life out of it, but with the Venue 2 they've increased that battery life quite a bit. So in today's video, I'm going to go over all the new features of the Venue 2, but I'm also going to go into quite a bit of detail about how this device performs in a sports and fitness capacity. I've been using it over the last few weeks where I tested it for running, cycling, weight training, swimming, and I even took it skiing, so I've got a pretty good idea of how this device performs. And I'm also going to have a follow-up video where I'll do a full unboxing, setup, and interface tour of the Venue 2, basically everything I couldn't necessarily cram into this video. And if you do find the information in this video useful, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below. The original Venue came in just one size, but with the Venue 2, it comes in two sizes, the larger Venue 2 and then the smaller Venue 2S, and here they all are just side by side so you can get an idea of how they size up. Just like the original Venue, the Venue 2 and Venue 2S have GPS, they have an altimeter, and they also have a heart rate sensor that can also measure your blood oxygen saturation levels. However, with the Venue 2 and Venue 2S, they have Garmin's latest and greatest fourth generation Elevate heart rate sensor that's supposed to be more accurate, and we'll find out how accurate it actually is here in just one bit. The original Venue has a 1.2 inch AMOLED display, and the newer Venue 2 has a slightly larger 1.3 inch display, and then the Venue 2S has a 1.1 inch display. But along with those new displays, the Venue 2 has a new processor with an integrated GPU that allows the Venue 2 to have some incredibly smooth animations, including the super smooth fade-in transition of the watch face, it makes the touch animations really smooth, and allows for insanely good-looking videos with vibrant colors and really nice shading. And they also have a new set of live watch faces that animate when you raise your wrist, and these also really show off what this display can do. To interact with the Venue 2, there's a touch screen along with two physical buttons, and this combination works really well. The touch screen is nice and responsive, it's very predictable, and I actually find it to be a little bit more predictable than the original Venue. Garmin also did a lot of work on the interface, and the biggest thing that you may notice is that the Venue 2 gets these widget glances, which were originally introduced on the Phoenix 6. So rather than swiping through dedicated widgets one by one like on the original Venue, the Venue 2 has these snapshots of the widgets showing you important bits of information, and then you can always, of course, just dive into each widget to see more detail. And this is really where you can see how Garmin took advantage of that display like this heart rate graph right here where you can swipe back and forth to see your heart rate over time. In regards to battery life, the original Venue was pretty decent for a device that had an AMOLED display where you could get about three to four or five days out of it depending on how many outdoor activities you tracked. And with the Venue 2, Garmin really upped those numbers and with the Venue 2, it's advertised to get up to 11 days and with the 2S, you're supposed to get up to 10 days in smartwatch mode, which basically means not using it to track any outdoor activities, which is pretty amazing for a device with an AMOLED display. And then for GPS battery life, they advertise that it should get up to 22 hours for the larger version and then 19 hours for the 2S. But in real life, I was getting a little over a week out of the Venue 2, and that was with using it to track about a 45 minute to hour long GPS activity per day, and I was not using one of their live watch faces, and I did not have the SpO2 sensor enabled. However, when I enabled the SpO2 sensor for sleep tracking, as well as used one of their live watch faces, that dropped it down to about five days, but that's still pretty darn good considering with the exact same settings, I was getting about two to three days out of the original Venue. Now, one thing that will zap your battery life quite a bit is using the always-on display mode, and they advertise only two days with this mode. So I'd really consider whether or not you need that always-on display, especially since the raised awake gesture seemed to work pretty well for me in most situations. But I have to say, the always-on display mode was pretty nice to look at. However, the Venue 2 does include a new battery saver mode, which can help you squeak out a bit more battery life by disabling some of the sensors on the watch. So not like double battery life or anything, but just like an extra day or two out of it. So this would probably be just just used in an emergency type situation. And one more new thing in regards to battery life is the Venue 2 also has rapid recharging, which if you charge the Venue 2 for just 10 minutes, you can get an extra day of battery life. On the smartwatch side of things, you'll be able to get notifications for texts, calls, and other alerts. So on an iPhone, these will be one-way notifications, but you won't be able to reply if you're using an iPhone. But if you have these paired to an Android phone, you'll be able to reply with predefined responses that you can set up in Garmin Connect. And then there's also the ability to use Garmin Pay for contactless payments. And then for music, both these models come with the capability of storing up to 650 tracks, which is up from the 500 tracks on the original venue for offline music playback using music streaming services like Spotify. Spotify, Deezer, and Amazon Music. 
The Venue 2s also come with Garmin safety and tracking features called Instant Detection as well as Get Assistance, which can send your information as well as location to emergency contacts that you set up in Garmin Connect. But just note that you do have to have your phone in range for this to work just because the watch is going to be using your cellular connection to send out that alert. On the health side of things, the Venue 2s come with Garmin's advanced sleep tracking widget that provides a sleep score along with lots of insights into your sleep. Like on this night, I did in fact sleep quite poorly and it very well could have been because I've been doing tons of training and testing lately. It also provides a nice chart of your last night's sleep along with time spent in different sleep stages like deep sleep, light sleep, REM, as well as time spent awake. And this leads into an improvement that Garmin's made with body battery. So body battery gives an indication of your energy levels throughout the day and this is based off of your exercise as well well as your sleep quality, and I've really enjoyed this feature, but Garmin's made some improvements to better utilize sleep data to give a more accurate body battery score. So if you got a poor night's sleep like I did that night, it reflects that a bit more accurately in your body battery score. The Venue 2 also comes with a feature called Fitness Age, and their intention with Fitness Age is to provide a little more relatable number than VO2 max, and it calculates this based on your actual age, and then combines that with your vigorous activity over the last week, resting heart rate, and then BMI or body fat percentage to estimate if your fitness level is above or below your actual age. They also have this new feature called Health Snapshots, and what this does is take samples of multiple health metrics all at one time, including your heart rate, blood oxygen saturation, respiratory rate, stress level, and heart rate variability, and it takes about two minutes to collect all of these metrics and gives you an average of all those data points from the last two minutes. Okay, so now that we've talked about all the health features of the Venue 2, let's now move on to the sports and fitness features. There's a pretty extensive list of sport profiles to choose from, from everything that you'd expect like running, both indoors and outdoors, cycling, both indoors and outdoors, pool swimming, but just note that there's no open water swimming profile. There's also the strength training profile, and there's now a new HIT workout profile, and there's new stuff with these profiles that I'll circle back to here in just one second. There's also a hiking profile, gym-based profiles like elliptical and stair stepper, and then there's indoor rock climbing and bouldering, which were first introduced with the Phoenix 6 Pro Solar, and then outdoor recreation profiles for paddleboarding, golf, as well as winter sports like skiing and snowboarding. Basically, tons to choose from, but let's talk about the strength training and HIT profiles first because there's some cool new stuff in here. So Garmin's made a few improvements with their strength training activity profile. So if you load in a workout from their list of workouts in Garmin Connect, first off, you get a really nice breakdown of that entire workout and the progression of one exercise to the next, which has been there in the past, but now it's just a lot prettier. However, if you click on one of these exercises, it shows you what muscle groups are being targeted in that exercise with this incredibly nice looking graphic. And they've also enhanced the workout animation to be one of the best animations I've seen on a watch. I mean, these little video animations contain so much detail and they're so incredibly smooth. There's also a new feature where you'll be able to log personal records for different types of strength training activities. Now, this feature isn't completely ready at the moment, but the idea behind it is that you'll be able to log PRs and then you'll be able to view those on your watch as well as in Garmin Connect. But the list of activities that they have right now at the moment seems a little bit short to me. So I would just love the ability to log a PR for any sort of strength training activity. But like I said, they're still working on this feature. So I'll probably circle back to this feature in a follow-up video. Now, those last two features are mainly used when you're using one of their built-in workouts or creating a custom workout, but you still can just use the strength training activity profile that they have, which attempts to automatically track your reps and tries to identify what type of exercise that you're doing. And I did an extensive video on how this works over two years ago, and I'll have that link down in the description below, but basically I'm seeing about the same results as before, where it does a pretty decent job at identifying reps, but the exercise recognition is generally hit and miss. And when I say hit, I don't mean hit, which is high intensity interval training, and that is a brand new activity profile to launch with a venue too. So with the new HIT activity profile, there's now different types of timers that you can set up depending on what type of workout that you're doing, including AMRAP, every minute on the minute, Tabata, which is 20 seconds on with 10 seconds of rest, and then you can set up a custom timer if you'd like with your interval time, rest time, how many moves per round, as well as the number of rounds. It's all pretty well thought out and it all will also attempt to count your reps during these workouts and it will show all this information later in Garmin Connect when you go to save your workout. So now let's talk about GPS accuracy and we'll first start with some running. So the total distance lined up just fine with some other test devices, so we're good to go there. And the calories also did line up as well. From a GPS track accuracy standpoint, pretty decent on this run, but I did encounter one section right over here on the right side of the map where it did veer off a little bit. But funny enough, all the devices kind of struggled on this run for some reason or another. So let's take a look at some other examples. On this road ride, again, the total distances lined up just fine and so did the elevation gain using the Venue 2's altimeter. And the calorie calculations also lined up really nicely. 
From a GPS track accuracy standpoint, this was pretty solid. This ride consisted of a mix of different things from completely straight and wide open sections of road to some winding bike paths with quite a few turns, as well as some areas with a good amount of tree cover. And overall, this looks really good. There were a handful of corners where it overshot just slightly, but these are very minor and overall the venue 2 did just great. And for mountain biking, this is probably one of the more challenging GPS tests just because of a lot of switchbacks and varying terrain, and the Venue 2 was reasonably close to other test devices for total distance. It was also pretty good when it came to the elevation gain on this ride compared to the elevation collected on other devices, as well as Strava's correct elevation figure that's in the center screenshot. For the GPS tracks, well, this was an out and back ride, so that's why there's so many tracks laid down, but it's kind of hard to find much wrong here. On all these tight turns, it tracked quite well. In fact, a bit better than another device that I had in this ride. And if I had to nitpick on this tight switchback right here, it shot out just a bit, but that was pretty much the only thing I could find. And before we get into the final section of this video, which is heart rate accuracy, I also wanted to quickly go over how well the Venue 2 did at estimating indoor running distances on a treadmill. So when I got done with my first treadmill run, a screen popped up asking me to enter the distance that was recorded on the treadmill, which should help calibrate the watch. And then after that first run, on all my subsequent runs, it stayed pretty well calibrated and was producing some pretty solid results. So pretty good stuff there. Okay, so now onto heart rate accuracy. So the Venue 2 and Venue 2S come with Garmin's latest fourth generation Elevate heart rate sensor, which also includes an SpO2 sensor. These two lights in the center are green and red lights, and then these four that you see on the outside are actually infrared lights that you can't see with the naked eye, but these are used to improve SpO2 accuracy. Of course, being the latest and greatest, they should also be the most accurate. For SpO2 accuracy, I found it to be quite close to a fingertip blood oxygen sensor. So this clip right here is doing four tests all in a row, and with every measurement, it was extremely close, and it was at most only off by one percentage point. And for heart rate accuracy, let's hop over to some charts. So for running, well, this is just about the most boring thing right here, but basically it was perfect other than some very minor blips right here and here where it was off by just like a few beats per minute. And then on this run, again, it was pretty good, but there were a few little wobbles here and here, and it did have about 30 seconds right here where it tracked about six to seven beats per minute off. And then for indoor cycling, it was basically perfect. There's really not much to complain about here. And then on this next example, same deal where it was pretty good, but there was one spot right here where it had a little hiccup when I elevated my heart rate quickly. But other than that, the rest of the session is basically on the money. Next up is road biking, and this is where things start to get a little more challenging for a wrist-based heart rate sensor just because of the added variables of gripping onto the handlebars as well as vibration from the road which can have an effect on these sort of sensors. And for the most part, the Venue 2 did pretty well. At the beginning there was a little delay in it locking on, but after that things were pretty tidy. There are some little mini spikes here and there, but I think what's interesting is that the optical arm heart rate sensor that I was using for comparison also experienced some of those little mini spikes, but overall this was pretty much what I like to see. Now, there are some activities that are notoriously hard for wrist-based heart rate sensors, and those include mountain biking, swimming, as well as weight training. And with mountain biking, basically there's the variable of gripping onto the handlebars quite a bit, as well as a lot of jarring movement that can happen over rough terrain, which can make the watch move around. But this example that I have right here is probably one of the better results I've seen from a wrist-based heart rate sensor for mountain biking. Sure, there are definitely spots where it dropped and spiked a little, but these were all momentary, and what we can see is that even though it did wander in some spots, it got back in line very quickly, which was really nice to see. Next up is weight training and high intensity interval training, which consists of a lot of varying arm movement and wrist flexion, which can throw off any wrist-based heart rate sensor. And what we can see here is that the venue wasn't perfect, but this is still on the better end of things for what I generally see from a wearable when it comes to tracking weight training. So the average heart rate was nearly exactly the same as the other heart rate sensors, but what we really need to look at are the trends. So you can see that it follows along for the most part, but there were some spots where it dropped a bit. And then this portion right here, after elevating my heart rate, it took a few minutes to track the rapid fall. But then for the rest of the workout, it did pretty well. It was a bit slow to react though on these high intensity intervals at the end where it was about five to 10 seconds behind the other heart rate sensors. And then here's a pool swim that I did. And with swimming wrist-based heart rate, I pretty much am just looking to make sure the trends line up. And for the most part, the Venue 2 did a good job. A bit of wandering at the beginning, but after that, I was actually pretty impressed with what I saw from the Venue 2, and it also produced a very usable average heart rate. So overall, I do think that fourth generation Elevate heart rate sensor is performing a bit more accurately than what I've seen in the past. But with activities like weight training, high intensity interval training, if you want really accurate heart rate, I'd still always recommend getting a chest heart rate strap. And I'll have a link down in the description below for a video where I went over a lot of budget options.
Oh, and to circle back to swimming really quick, the Venue 2 also did a good job in tracking the total distance on the swim, and it provides a quite a bit of detail to pour over. It's also able to automatically track your intervals along with stroke type, and it also has automatic rest detection between intervals, and I found this feature to work pretty well. The rest detection happens within just a couple seconds of stopping an interval, and then a rest timer pops up. And I almost forget that I took the Venue 2 skiing, and this is kind of a neat sport profile where it's actually able to automatically track your runs. And how it does this is using the built-in altimeter to detect when you're ascending on the chairlift, and then as soon as you get off the chairlift and start descending, it starts a new lap, and all this information is available to you, including your lap time, distance, elevation loss, and speed. Overall, I think Garmin nailed it with the Venue 2. The two new size options are great, the display along with the new processor and GPU are just fantastic and it really shows in the new interface along with the live watch faces and the animations throughout and then those workout videos are pretty impressive. The original Venue was a pretty big hit but I can only imagine that the Venue 2s are probably going to be an even bigger hit. With that amazing looking AMOLED display along with pretty impressive battery life, I think it's going to give a lot of other smartwatches on the market a big run for their money. Anyhow, if you liked the video, if you found the information in this video useful, it would be oh so awesome if you hit that like button down below. And I'd also encourage you to subscribe for more super in-depth reviews of devices like this, like smartwatches, sports watches, and other cool sports tech devices. Thanks so much for watching. And in the meantime, have fun out there, and we will see you in the next video.